bendiciones dios te bendiga que lo que es mi gente peace to all god bless to all this is your brother david rodriguez with another episode of hispaniola history channel and for this episode we're going to explore the formal government system that was in the island of hispaniola prior to the formation of the dominican republic prior to the formation of the haitian government and prior to the arrival of the french what former government ruled the land stay tuned this is hispaniola history channel Source, Mark A. Burkholder, Council of the Indies, Encyclopedia of Latin America History and Culture, Volume 2, page 293. The Spanish West Indies, or the Spanish Antilles, were Spanish colonies in the Caribbean. In terms of governance of the Spanish Empire, the Indies were the designation for all of its overseas territories and was overseen by the Council of the Indies founded in 1524 and based in Spain. The Hispanophone Caribbean is part of the wider Hispanic America, which includes all of the Spanish-speaking countries in the Americas. Historically, coastal areas of Spanish Florida and the Caribbean South America were closely tied to the Spanish Caribbean. During the period of the Spanish settlement and colonization of the New World, the Spanish West Indies referred to those settlements in the islands of the Caribbean Sea under political administration of Spain as the phrase, a 1765 Cudela authorized seven seaports in addition to the port of San Juan to trade with the Spanish Caribbean. The Captaincy General of Santo Domingo was the first colony in the New World established by Spain in 1492 on the island of Santo Domingo. The colony under the jurisdiction of the Real Audiencia of Santo Domingo was granted administrative powers over the Spanish possessions in the Caribbean and most of its mainland coasts, making Santo Domingo the principal political entity of the early colonial period. It is the site of the first European city in the Americas and the oldest castles, fortresses, cathedrals, monastery in the region. Colony was a meeting point of European explorers, soldiers, and settlers who brought with them the culture, architecture, laws, and traditions of the old world. Capacity General of Santo Domingo, 1535 to 1865. Map of the West Indies provided by the British Library. 1899, which includes Hispaniola, with the eastern part of the island marked as Santo Domingo. Five main points and contributions I would like to add in terms of what the captaincy of Santo Domingo was. It was the first to establish a court system. This court system was very vital in terms of enforcing the laws through the courts that actually advocated the natives, giving rights to natives and to Spaniards and to all who were under the Spanish crown. So the court system was very important, which was established in 1511, and it worked hand in hand with the church, the first churches. So there was a movement to spread the Christian faith, the Christian religion throughout the Americas, a religion that is now the foundation, the foundational ideology of America. Whether you talk about the United States or all nations in the Western Hemisphere, for the most part, practice Christianity. So these were the early movements that made that happen over 500 years ago. Of course, it established trade, commodities, and things of that nature that created wealth. And some of these things were, of course, the sugar cane and coffee, tobacco, cotton, and of course, cattle ranching. Cattle ranching became the standard of wealth for the average vecino, the average landowner in Santo Domingo at that time. Much is said about the greedy Spaniards, the gold rush, in terms of Spaniards only coming to the island to plunder and take gold, but gold was actually not the main economy, the main driving point for the economy. It was actually these things that we mentioned, sugar, coffee, tobacco, cotton, and cattle ranching. Uh, the cowboys, the vaqueros, this is what made the majority of landowners and inhabitants of the island at that time under the captaincy of Santo Domingo. And as mentioned earlier, from this point here, seaports 
were established throughout the Americas, seven of them to be specific. And the Santiago Knights uh, played a, a huge role in that, in establishing these ports throughout the Americas. And with these ports, this is how you create trade with other regions in the Americas, other groups, other folks who were also trading. As we learned in previous episodes, the Lucayans were already producing cotton. And that was a group that traded early with some of the Portuguese merchants in Hispaniola and uh, things like tobacco and things of that nature. So these things became commodities. These things became methods of trade with other inhabitants and other natives in the Americas and with other Europeans. And the seaports were vital in moving these products throughout the Americas. And the Spanish coin, which was the standard for a long time in the Americas, uh, before the American dollar, it was the Spanish coin. And what was worth even more than the Spanish coin was the Portuguese coin, the Portuguesa. This is some of the things I mentioned in previous episodes, right? So the Spanish coin was circulating up to the late 1800s. And as a matter of fact, Puerto Rico was minting its own coin, its own Spanish coin. So there was a self-sufficiency there in the Spanish Caribbean, centered around Puerto Rico, Cuba, and of course, Santo Domingo. So there was a great deal of wealth that was circulating throughout the Spanish West Indies, and the capital being the captaincy of Santo Domingo, the main meeting points, the melting pots, the Times Square of its day, the New York City of its day. We're talking about Santo Domingo, a huge piece of the Spanish empire that was a global network, right? And of course, once you on top, once you're a global empire, these things create jealous and envy. This is where the black legend plays a part in tarnishing the image of Spain. So to make it give reason for some of these European nations, other up and coming European nations to come in and plunder and take what the Spanish had established in the Americas. And we're talking about the seaports, the trade, the establishment of tobacco, cotton, coffee, and sugar, and spreading the cattle ranch culture throughout the Americas, right? Spain did that. So these other European nations, first entry into the Americas, one is to trading with Spain, but also pirating and taking from Spain. All these nations were at war with Spain. So this is where the black legend plays a role because it painted Spain as the bad guy and painted Spain as a very oppressive empire. So as to paint the empire as an empire that needed to be taken down. So this is, has to be acknowledged and put into perspective in terms of how and why and what was Hispaniola before all these dates that we hear about so much. Before the 1844 establishment of Dominican Republic, uh, before the establishment of Haiti, 1804, uh, before the French entering the island, there was already a foundation there that became the foundation of many other colonies, governments throughout the Americas. This has to be known and this has to be acknowledged and remembered. And there you have it, folks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. This is the Hispaniola History Channel with your brother, David Rodriguez. Good night and God bless.